and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. It is time again to fulfill the annual ritual. To give power to he who pities fools. To keep suckers from ruining our year. And to ensure that Webster enjoys Christmas, the Mr. T Review! As indicated, last year we were blessed with three Mr. T related stories. In comic book quickies, A Christmas Dream, and of course, Mr. T and the T-Force. Amusingly though, since then, someone brought to my attention something that connects the T-Force to Mr. T's Christmas special. And it's all thanks to one man. Hiya, Santa. How am I doing? Yes, it seems that this was not the only time that New York Mayor Ed Koch met Mr. T. We haven't seen a lot of the T-Force as a group in the comics lately, but it seems that's because they're dealing with racist landlords. If discrimination is keeping you out, you call the New York City Fair Housing Task Force. The T-Force can open doors for you. This was the power of the T-Force! The comic premiered before the commercial was filmed, and by the time it came out, they were ready to put the hurt down on discrimination. And that's the law. And the T-Force will enforce that law. In court. Where is my Law & Order spinoff featuring Mr. T bringing racists to court? This is what is really wrong with streaming. Nobody is offering Mr. T his own TV show where he beats up rich assholes and then sues them. But anyway, let's talk about the story we've got going on now. Last time on Mr. T and the T-Force, our hero was dealing with a series of robberies being perpetrated by a gang of parkouring kids. Said kids are under the direction of some jackass encouraging them to do this, so it's up to Mr. T to track him down. He knows one member already, Lester, who's been ditching school and making his mama unhappy. And we all know how Mr. T feels about disrespecting mamas. Mother. There is no other like mother to treat her right. And we ended with Mr. T breaking into the kids' room that night demanding answers. So let's dig into Mr. T and the T-Force number 8 and see what excuses this kid has for first name Mr., middle name that period, last name T. The cover is, unfortunately, very boring. Just a photo of Mr. T. Look how utterly disappointed and angry he is about this. This is a man who knows this cover sucks and they could do better. But perhaps he needs to keep his rage in check. For this cover is fortunate enough to have something far more valuable on it. A free Mr. T trading card! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I've touched the face of God. We open Street and Cold Smarts Part 2 Hearts, right where we left off last time. Lester balks at Mr. T's attempt to connect him to the discarded shoe. Yeah, like I got the only pair of sneakers in the hood. Man, you so tough on evidence, you should have been a pig. Oh, dude, you're lucky Mr. T won't hurt kids, otherwise I'm pretty sure you'd be eating that shoe right now. Mr. T decides to open his bedroom door. Hey, hey, what you doing? Hey, man, don't! An honest son makes his mama proud. Mom, I masturbate to pictures of Ernest Borgnine. Not even naked ones, either. Okay, point taken. Honesty is not always the best policy. However, this was not to go visit his mother like I thought it would be. The door opens into Lester's closet, which features what I think are supposed to be stolen electronics, tape decks, stereos, a camcorder, a TV, etc. The answer is... Juliet, Attica, Leavenworth. Huh? And time's up! The question is, which of these was used for names in the 1997 movie Cube? 
No, of course, they're prisons that Lester is going to end up at if he doesn't get his life together. And so Mr. T decides to kidnap Lester as he drags him out of his apartment by shoving his face in his armpit. Guess he needs some fresh air by now, huh? This is either hell or something that someone would pay good money for to experience with Mr. T. He drags him into an alleyway and declares that he's gonna make Lester his personal hobby. You're gonna wish I'd busted your sorry case. You think you're on the road to easy money? You're on the road to hard time! Mr. T, you just dragged a teenager out of his own home and tossed him in an alley while he was only in his underwear. Are you sure he's the one who's gonna be doing hard time? Now I'd tell you to get out of my sight, but then that would remind you that I didn't actually have any reason to drag you out like this, and I didn't really have any plan. No, he actually means that he's gonna keep Lester in his sights, stalking him wherever he goes, or having members of the T-Force watching him. One of his friends asks why he missed the last few meetings as they're working on a score, but Lester informs him that he's being tailed. To continue our theme of child kidnapping, the friend shoves Lester into a van, where the leader of the gang starts tying him up with duct tape. His bodyguard is ordered to floor it, but that ain't happening. You got something in there that don't belong to you, sucker! And now you belong to me! Give me back my duct tape, fool! Was about to update the Mr. T superpower count for another example of super strength, thinking that Mr. T was holding the van in place, but turns out some city worker attached a chain and hook to the bumper of the van, just leading into the sewer. Man, Pinhead's hit on some hard times after the Hulu Hellraiser reboot. However, they put the van in four-wheel drive and they managed to get free. The random-ass hook and chain just ripping the van's bumper off instead. However, let's give it up for some super speed and endurance. Sure, we might have seen one or the other power before, but he manages to catch up to the van on foot and survive getting hit by it. At least that's what I think is happening in this panel. It's not clear because it looks like the van crashed in the second panel and then Mr. T is just randomly hit. And I should clarify, really, at this point, we've lost track of individual superpowers Mr. T possesses. It's really just more when it's clear Mr. T is demonstrating the possession of superpowers. I invite you guys to actually figure out how many unique powers he has. Heard a couple ribs pop. I don't like that. Not when they're mine. Ah, well, I'll just walk off the popped ribs. Should be good in ten minutes. At the gang's hideout, and we can see the van smoldering in the background as if the engine exploded. Yeesh. The leader holds a gun to Lester's head and makes it clear. He's either in or out, and if he's out, he's dead. Either way, you're gonna feel a hundred percent better. Ah, I see this guy used to work at Activision. Naturally, Lester is in, and they start a briefing on their next planned robbery. It's a safe at the top of a building. They built the building around this baby. Load-bearing safes were a weird architectural fad in the 80s. Supposedly any blast big enough to crack the safe would bring the entire building down, so that option's out. Lester says they need to use the house to get the job done, and we cut to the night of the robbery, with him leaping from massive rooftops for this. To the point where it seems like he'd need superpowers to make the jump without hurting himself. We need to put the get to your head, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I guess that means shattering your bones. Points for the role in the artwork, though. The transfer of momentum and kinetic energy does make it more believable that he'd make the jump. Though considering how young he's supposed to be, it's still a bit iffy. Anyway, once inside the building, he disables the alarm and lets the other gang members in. A security guard tries to stop them, but since they're basically ninjas now, they beat him up. One tells Lester to finish off the guard. Lester clearly does not want to kill him, so he just whispers to them to stay still as he punches around his head. However, while the robbery is happening, Mr. T traced the damaged van, which was leaking oil, back to their hideout. Being the polite sort, he knocks on the door. Who's there? Kool-Aid man, sucker! Oh, yeah. Mr. T says he never thought he'd be closing down a school, but like, he made this comparison last time that the gang leader was a teacher because kids don't just inherently want to do this stuff, but it seems like a bit of a stretch for this analogy. Like, am I a teacher because I tell you guys about comic history sometimes? Or am I just a dude having a conversation with you sharing what I know? Anyway, Mr. T kicks his ass. While Lester isn't there, he does find their plans to rob the safe and heads out. So, what's Lester's plan to open the safe? Well, attach it to a big chain and have the... nine of them pull the massive vault of a safe out of the wall! Moving it on rollers and then shoving it out a hole they make in the wall out onto the streets! You 
magnificent bastard, I read your book! Okay, given the size and how heavy this thing has to be, I'm pretty sure this would be physically impossible for nine very strong adults, much less a bunch of teenagers! Like, points for the rollers idea, but actually getting it to budge out of the wall to begin with is a bit much. Even for a series that features Mr. T with super strength. Man, use the house, you said. That's what I like about you, Lesta. Thinking all the time. Yeah, thinking. Thinking to myself, how did it come to this? This is not my beautiful house. This is not my beautiful wife. Like an idiot, the gang leader is just standing right around the spot the vault is falling onto, and I would have laughed my ass off if they had killed him, but no. He gets out of the way as the vault is broken on impact, and he just starts collecting money. However, Mr. T has arrived. Man, you must be community conscious, picking up all this paper so we don't blow away before the cops get here. Well, yeah, I don't want the cops to steal it, Mr. T. The gang rappel down, spotting Mr. T and pulling out an Uzi. Hey, he got the teacher in the payroll! Wolfpack this sucker! Wolfpack? Is this like the Chicago typewriter slang for a Tommy gun that people pointed out a few episodes ago? They try to gang pile him, but Lester has had enough, kicking the Uzi user down and declaring that he's sick of all this. The cops arrive and arrest the gang, but Mr. T hands a shocked Lester over to them too. You made the right move, Lester. Just wish you made it yesterday. Okay, but like... They threatened him with a gun and kidnapped him off the street. What the hell was he supposed to do? He tells Lester he has to be strong and gives him a T-Force bracelet, which I feel like the cops would confiscate, but whatever. And so our comic ends with Mr. T saying that he can do some good with that bracelet once he's done his time. This comic is good, but that ending is disappointing. Like, obviously Lester will have to face some consequences for the crimes he committed, but that seems like the kind of thing they can talk about with his mother and the cops first, not just slap him in handcuffs right after he helped save you. I mean, yeah, it's Mr. T, he probably didn't need any saving, but still, principle of the thing, time and place, etc. While our beloved Mr. T feels a bit more iffy in some of the ethics of what he's doing in this one, he's still kicking ass and clearly trying to do his best for Lester, even hunting down the van despite some popped ribs and then taking on the murderous bodyguard. The overall story is fine despite some ridiculous moments, which is honestly kind of par for the course for this series, and the artwork except for one spot remains solid and fun. Though this one shot of Mr. T grimacing is one they've reused before in previous issues. Gotta imagine it's traced from a real photo or something for that. Next time, back to Patreon-sponsored episodes as we get some resolution on another Patreon-sponsored review. It's back to the Dresden Files. there. Hey, fool! You can't keep people out because of their race, creed, color, sex, age, or handicap. Hello, my friends. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications on new video releases. If you'd like to support future videos, you can check out my Patreon or purchase a t-shirt via Teespring or Shark Robot. Thanks for watching!